spoke me about the Wunderhorn project, um, I was immediately motivated because I know this is completely up the street. I mean, anything with Mahler and Dietrich for me is, 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 is right. Um, uh, I was not aware of this uh, situation with Wunderhorn leader. Um, and of course, I'm passionate uh, to discover um, what's going to be performed, either with piano or partly with orchestration. Um, so uh, I, have, I have accepted very, very much to be part uh, of, of this project as a co-producer. Uh, and I want, to thank uh, I want to thank Dietrich and, and, and his colleagues for, for bringing this up. Because it's true that we always know this Wunderhorn leader as kind of... Uh, there's always an addition to, to a recital program. They're never being performed as a cycle. And in order to make them credible, to use the means of today, which is to go back into the history, to, to try and narrate a story on the basis of these stories, uh, something highly, highly creative. I'm not saying it's the definite solution for, for, for this, but at least it will bring out another approach and it might revive also the songs as they were intended. Antonius zur Predigt, in Kirche findet ledig, er geht zu den Flüssen und predigt den Fischen. First of all, it's good music to sing. They are vocally brilliantly written, sometimes very difficult, but they fit to, uh, to what a German speaker can directly express vocally. They are very close, they are very, very uh, focused on the poetry. They are demanding an, understand, an emotional understanding of the language, of the words you're saying, and giving something in addition that means if they are joyful, which they are sometimes, first degree joyful, there is a second degree behind, which, which is emotional and which is, it's not just joy. It's, there, there is m m sadness behind, there is melancholy behind. He found a way to transport at the same time joy and sadness. It's not easy to describe what attracts me in Dietrich but um, it is something which I had from the first time I saw him. I first saw him as leader and uh, a concert performer. I didn't really see him in opera. Um, and uh, he has, of course, always kept his very boyish looks. And, and um, I always thought of him as a, as a kind of um, ideal person to render a text alive. The collection of poetry which Achim von Arnim and Clemens von Brentano have done with Lieder aus des Knaben Wunderhorn. Most of them, most of these poems are connected to the 30 years war in six, from 1618 to 1648. Uh, most of them are coming out as sort of folk poetry. Nearly all of them have as an element, something connected to war. If it's the beloved is not there, but in war. If it's directly the, the story of a soldier going to execution. If it's soldiers going out wishing and wanting to fight. This fact, which Mahler inspired the most, that there is a connecting element of war in them. There is a lot of criticism in these poems. Criticism 
of the weakness of men, criticism of the, the bad effects he does by his selfishness, there is a lot of sarcasm about the, the lack of, of humanity and if you read them carefully as they are written and you understand them you well you would become a, a better human being and things like this were impossible und nun mein Herz allerliebster Schatz jetzt muss ich wohl scheiden many of these songs i'd say most of these songs are dialogues written as poetical dialogues between most of them between a man and a woman the dialogue situation is implicit in this poetry and Mahler explicitly said that he did not want this to be performed by two singers for one song so these dialogues are inner monologues and these inner monologues demand that you precisely can uh, can formulate and can articulate your role. Therefore, it's not bad to be an opera singer to, to perform these songs as you, you have an idea, a concrete idea of, of theater and of the way to distinguish two people speaking, uh, being one person giving a monologue. There was something in the discussions I could have with, uh, with uh, Dietrich about repertoire in general, and also his desire, which matched with mine, to completely rethink his repertoire and his career. Um, and it's true that since my first season here at La Monnaie, we have been making one role debut after the other. He did um, his first Golo, he finished Peleas, which was of course the old Dietrich Henschel, and uh, then debuted as Golo, which also set his voice in a much more bass baritonal way. And it's been the beginning of a development which now is leading him to the roles which are much more for his temperament than for his age. Uh, he is no longer uh, the young uh, Olivier in Capriccio. He's much more, as I said, the cynical count. Um, so we've gone through many, many roles. He sang his first Edip. He sang his first uh, Nick Shadow here. Uh, we had other major debuts with him and, and also roles that he sang like Wozzeck which he performed in my first season here at La Monnaie. And of course, uh, the coronation of all of this was his recent debut as, um, as Dr. Schön in Lulu, um, which for me proved that now the voice is completely placed in the right position um, and that the actor has become an amazing talent. And for me, Dietrich, therefore, is, is, is the complete package. He is the singer who can do opera today. He is also the singer who can perform Mahler leader, uh, orchestra leader in the best possible way imaginable today. And he is for me the person who also communicates leader texts in, in a perfect way. So he is, he is like a complete artist. Ich arme Tambus sei. 